What's up, family? I'm your girl, Tamika D. Mallory. And it's your boy, my son, the general. And we are your host of Street Politicians, the, the place, place where, where the streets, streets and, and politics meet. meet. It's, um, you know, a lot of, like, good energy. The energy good is energy. phenomenal. Good energy. Positivity. Positivity. We're talking about money. We're oh, talking today we're talking about money, we're talking money, about money. money. The energy money. get different. Yes. Today we're talking about money. We're going to be talking about money a lot. Like yes. folks can can kind of just it just accept the fact that street politicians and money is going to be a thing because it's like we scared to talk about money. You know, one of the things I noticed, even in, in Until Freedom, we sit down for meetings and we know that a major part of the discussion has to be fundraising yeah. and where we go and, and and servicing the people who have given us resources over time. But for some reason, we will talk about cases families we're supporting where we need to be how we need to get it done all of the things we will we'll start talking about our mental health we'll start talking about the whatever we have to do for ourselves and our until freedom community other people's problems everything and then we spend this short amount of time focused on fundraising so much that now we have had to say no these meetings are only going to be about fundraising so we can force ourselves to talk about money there is something about now linda who uh, she is she is um arab american right i don't know if that's a thing but she's arab however she's an american um she doesn't mind talking about money she wants to talk about money Every single day. And I know that there are stereotypes about communities, but I think that the way in which she was raised, it has always been important. Like her father being an entrepreneur, he has always trained them to get their money and save their money and not spend exuberant amounts on things that don't matter. I think with us as black people, somewhere along the line, it's like the like we got scared that we can't talk about money, we can't raise money, we can't have money, we can't buy a house. We can't have why because you know we've been taught that in, in our communities, when you actually get money, you become a target, you've done something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. People will, like, you know, we was talking to Mona and she said, People will promote you and they want to act like they want to see you get to a certain level, then when they get you to a level, they want to tear you down, right? Right, right? so people want to see you good, just do good, just not better than them. Mm -hmm. And it's it's sad, it's, it's, a, it's a mind state that for some reason our culture has adopted you know that especially in in the arena that we're in we mm. feel we feel bad about having resources about being able to pay rent about having nice <laughs> clothes about having about nice, being able to pay, pay your rent you feel bad because <laughs> if you're fighting for the people there is this notion that you should be homeless and destitute. right that you should get a job like you should work at McDonald's <laughs> you should be on the front line you should put your you life on you should be at working and traveling work and doing McDonald's all that but and, still and people and if you're not doing that then you've done something wrong yeah. you're cheating the people you're yeah. robbing the people you're capitalizing on black that you every Everything wrong, right? And people outside that can talk about killing us and this and that, they can promote anything, the most negative things in the world, and they can be billionaires. They can sell, they can do everything, and people will celebrate them. But when you are in this field, if you have a dollar over lunch meat, you are somehow a criminal and you are robbing your community. Mm -hmm. So we, we 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 are traumatized by that. Most people are traumatized by that. I, I don't I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to the poor righteous teacher. I don't subscribe to you being broke in order to have to At take all. care of your people. It doesn't even make sense. I think those are the people. Anybody who's willing to fight and die for our people to make sure justice, equity, and equality should be people that are substantially taken care of and should have probably more resources than the rest of the people. But that's just how I feel. So. You know, I think we have to get out of that mind state right. of being afraid to talk about money because when we talk about freedom, freedom ain't free. The that's enemy right. that's trying to kill us and stop us from moving, they are investing billions of dollars into that reality. Absolutely. So if you're not investing thousands or hundreds of dollars or even a million dollars into that, how do you think you're going to beat them? Right. So I, I had somebody say to me recently, and I had this conversation with Dr. Bernice King, which is Martin Luther King's daughter, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter. Let's get that right for some Doctor. respect Put on the his in the name. Period. And you, the, the thing that came up, I was doing an interview and someone said, you know, 
even the King Center, they have corporate sponsors and they shouldn't be taking money because Dr. King didn't have no corporate sponsors. And the question that I have is, number one, do you give them money? Even even five dollars, even five dollars. Do you give it to the King Center, which is a place that is carrying on the legacy of Coretta Scott King and Dr. King, not just from a perspective of like a, you know, a memorabilia, but there's programming at the King Center. They also deal with conflict resolution. I remember when I was going through, you know, some real public conflict. Um, and, and particularly what happened with um, uh, Samaria Rice, you know, when they, I was sent a letter demanding that I meet with her and, you know, the whole story, demanding that I meet with a bunch of people. And I said, okay, no problem. I would like to bring Dr. Bernice King with me to the meeting. One, you know, even though I know Dr. King and I love her, but she tells my ass the truth all the time. Let's just be clear. She sees something she don't like, she picks up the phone and she's like, listen, this is not right. I don't think y'all are doing it right. Don't invoke my father's name in things that are not true to what it is that he was trying to accomplish. She never said that to me, thank God. But I know she does to other people just in general, right? And so this is a very, very this is a woman who knows how to be, um, uh, oh, she's for black people 100%, but she knows how to be, um, what is the word neutral in any space? You need environments like that because there is tension in movements. We should be invested in making sure that the King Center is a staple place in our community that can do all of these things. So rap and, and how the hell do you think that she is going to be able to be herself speak truth to power, challenge white supremacy. She's supposed to go work again at the McDonald's. That's not going to that's not going to happen. She has her parents legacy to continue. So who else is going to pay for it if we are not invested saying let's give $5, $10, $2? It's supposed to fall from the sky. No, you're not even supposed to take it if it falls from the sky. Oh, because that's a corporation. No, not okay. as corporate. If it falls from the sky, it's George Soros's money. You got to oh, get it right. Oh. What's wrong? You forgot? To the sky. Oh, this is what I'm saying. So there's always going to be something. And I think that that for us means we have to push back against that. And we've got to focus on money all the time so that we are constantly educating ourselves, our children, and our community on something that people have tried to keep us away from so that, one, it's a divisive tool not to have us talk about money, and two, so that we will never, ever, because the next step, first of all, you educate people on the how and the what's, right? Then you educate them on the unity piece. How you pull your resources together. And I promise you that whoever plants the seeds that money is bad for black people, those are the same folks or that is the same force that does not want us to figure out how to bring our money together. So 1.3 or 1.4 now trillion dollars that we spend will be in our own communities. You ain't said nothing but the truth. I mean, I'm just saying. So anyway, speaking of that, we're um, and at the time that this interview airs, yes. we, God willing, God that willing. all things work out as they're supposed to, will be in Africa on sort of a pilgrimage for us where we are traveling um, to sacred land. Uh, I think we need it. Like we've been fighting so much and just against so many things internally, externally. I think it's time for us to have a reset and a focus on, um, you know, on, on where our people, where the origination of all people, let's be clear, That's right. began. But also the activists and the community, especially since George Floyd's murder since people you know since that time people from africa and other places around the globe have been reaching out to us reaching out trying to learn more about until freedom teaching us things that they are doing in their um communities mm -hmm. and you know across the world and particularly in africa and i think we um are, will do ourselves justice as leaders to go deeper 
and to understand that the world is not just here in America, but there is a world outside of that. And so we'll be um, on our trip and hopefully we'll be able to bring y'all some clips. I look forward to it though, you know, just the, the pilgrimage to the motherland, you know, being able to formulate and just come into, bring into fruition what until freedom really needs to push it to the next level. Mm. You know, for me, it's just this work that we do is selfless, but it is for our people, and we want to see something. We want to catapult our organization into a position to where it's able to really effect change. And mm. I think going to Africa and, and, and sitting with our people and feeling the essence of the ancestors is going to take, you know, our organization into the next level of the work that's needed to be done. So I definitely look forward to that. Yep, I look forward to it too. So let's get into our interview today because we talking about money, 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 money. Make sure y'all put that as a song in money. the in the um, in the edit. Money, money, money. That's the jam. Money. Well, they yeah, we got we got our brothers some today. Some people got to have it. Hey, hey, hey. Some people who sing that. Really need it. Ow, ow. Lord have mercy. This do lady thinks she's singing do today. Things, do things, do things, uh uh. Some people do bad things for that money, money, money. But we talking about the good stuff. The good stuff. Says that. And we talking to some good brothers. You know, my brothers from Earn Your Leisure, you know, Rashad Bilal and Troy Millens, two of the Biggest, I mean, the biggest, because that's what they say. They have the biggest conversations. That's what they say? Yes, they that's have what the they biggest say. That's, conversations. that's what they say. You know, they're two of the biggest wealth connoisseurs, I call them. They talk about wealth and they talk about financial literacy and how it is important, not just important, it is imperative mm -hmm. for us to be teaching not only our kids, but everyone in our culture about how important it is and how it is just as important as anything else that we learn in school, mm -hmm. if not more important. Mm -hmm. So these brothers are going to break it down for you. We're going to talk about cryptocurrency, you know, because I, I want to know. I be wanting to know about stuff. I want to know about cryptocurrency because I might invest my money. In your, in your crypto? My little coins. I might invest my I coins. I want to know about crypto too, but I also feel like, is it safe? So, you know, I, I want to know about that. And then also we got to ask them about the federal government because now other people see folk, black folks particularly making a little money, the change, and they like, oh, we need regulations. Yep, so we're going to talk to our brothers about that and they're going to give us all of the tea. All the tea. Earn your leisure, first of all. I think they started in 2019. But before that, they were teaching financial literacy to public school students in the Bronx. They um, launched Earn Your Leisure to discuss the money plays behind the scenes in sports, entertainment, and business. So they wanted to just talk about what was going on. Like, you know, what, how you get money in sports and all of that. But it obviously has blossomed into so much. They have five. They have at least 5 million downloads of people who have sat down and watched and listened to the episodes. They got 422,000 YouTube subscribers, subscribers, which is a big deal because, you mm -hmm. know, getting people to subscribe on YouTube. I, first of all, I've not ever tried it. Yeah. But I know uh, how about people. that? But I know of the people who have, and it seems to be quite a thing. But they have 702,000 Instagram followers. 700,000 Instagram followers these brothers have from talking about financial literacy. That's dope. Dope, dope, so dope. So let's bring on our guest. Yeah! Our brothers yes. from Earn Your Leisure, Rashad Bilal and Troy Millens. I'm so happy to have them on here today so we can, like, get old stuff. Yeah, you know, these these are brothers from the BX. From the <laughs> BX <laughs> finest. Right. You know That's what I'm saying? Right. So I'm, I always feel good when I see my brothers from the Bronx doing what they do. They are elevating the culture. They are the new generation culture leaders. Like, you know... What they're doing with this whole cryptocurrency and just empowerment about finances and teaching us how to be entrepreneurs and think outside of the box and have intergenerational wealth is just something that is inspiring. You know, watching these brothers, I have the pleasure to say that I was one of like early was on a show yeah, early. Yeah, yeah. You know true. what I'm saying? And, I, and just watching, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just watching them and just being proud, man. Just you know, a lot of us we don't support 
or celebrate people that are actually winning because you know for some reason we see it as as men we don't want to do it a lot but i just want to say yeah competition but i want to say that i admire you brothers and you inspire me every day today i was listening to y'all breakfast club interview and i was like yo i gotta i gotta be out here working you know what I'm saying? I got, I got to do more. I just got to do more. Shout out to 19 Keys. Y'all brothers, all y'all yeah. brothers inspired me. So it's a pleasure to have y'all on our show. Oh, you know what's funny? Um, the, the whole conversation around with, you know, you guys being on Breakfast Club. Sometimes I talk to Charlemagne. He and I talk actually every single day. And, you know, we've been debating whether or not NFTs, crypto, like what's good, what's not, you know, should we be invested here and there? So I'm glad that y'all got a chance to sit down. Down together because hopefully some of the issues and concerns that he had um and that i have you know have been sort of addressed so again thank y'all for being with us no nah, thank you thank you for having us and mice so i appreciate you wearing that dreams and nightmares hat it's crazy yeah you actually. know yeah yeah <laughs> see we got it up there too yeah, yeah. i was yeah, just man, i was yeah. just I was, yeah. I was just with my cousin uh punchy yesterday he actually came and dropped some merch off and he was talking about you um, so yeah, man, keep up the great work. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. And again, we appreciate Definitely. you blessing our platform. And Tamika, thank you for pulling up to our activation at Art Basel. It was a pleasure meeting you in person. And we, you know, been lo long time supporters of you. So this, this is a privilege right here. Absolutely. And y'all, you know, we're talking with Shine that day. That was an incredible interview, thank um, you. that happened in that space. And, you know, we had Shine on as well. I feel like we as a community, like all of us who are now getting older, especially, you know, above, like, say, I guess 35, but definitely 40, we're getting, we're understanding what was lacking and what we weren't taught when we were younger. We're getting it. And I think that the fact that we're not getting it at 70 and we're so much closer to the younger generation, I think this generation is going to be a little bit different and, and better for the information that people like you are trying to teach. So, you know, the financial literacy, and I guess a, a question that I would ask in that is like, why do y'all feel like financial literacy is so important? Like this is not, you know, is it, is it, it's not the cool hip hop. It's not the, you know, oh, I'm a rapper. I'm this, that, and the third, you know, you, you're doing something that's very different. And so why would you say this was where you wanted to lean in? Well, I think it's important because I was talking about this the other day. Like if you look at the school system, um, there's certain things that are like mandatory that you have to learn. At least when I was in school, it was like earth science. We had a Regents exam. Like you had to take earth science. You had to take chemistry. You got to take math. Um, you got to take like biology, different things like history. And um, I don't understand why financial literacy and finances is something that's mandatory because it's like, let's take earth science or biology. And that's great to know. We need more scientists, but the vast majority of people are not going to use those skill sets unless you're a chemist or a doctor where every single person has to have financial literacy. It doesn't matter whether you work for sanitation or whether you're the president of the United States or whether you're a podcast or whether you're a basketball player. The common denominator is that everybody's going to pay taxes. Everybody has to retire. Everybody, you know, has to, you know, save money. Everybody opens bank accounts. Everybody uses credit cards. Everybody, you know, should be concerned about their credit score. Everybody at one point in time is going to have to live somewhere, whether you rent an apartment or whether you own a home. So these are things that every single person does, but we're not educated on it. Like there's no education on how to buy a home in the school system. And what happens is that you just go out there and you just wing it, go to a bank. You don't know if they're giving you the best interest rate. You don't know what type of mortgage you're mm -hmm. getting. You just, you know, hopefully you just don't get taken advantage of. You don't even think about getting taken advantage of because because you don't even have any knowledge to even ask a question. Mm -hmm. So taxes, same thing. Like, you know, we see so many people falling in, in issues and hard times with taxes. People get drafted into the NBA, don't even know that they have to actually pay taxes. They're 20, 21 years old. So I feel like financial literacy is one of these things that's just as important as reading and writing and, and math. And um, I feel like, you know, since it's not, you know, taught <clears throat> in the school system and since it, for a long time, it wasn't popular, it wasn't sexy then, it was just, you know, our obligation to just kind of champion it. I feel like everybody has different, you know, strengths and different missions that they're on. Some people do like the political side. Some people do, you know, criminal reform. You know, our, our angle is financial literacy and just try to empower people through that. So I think it's extremely important, something that, you know, everybody um, should should be aware of. Everybody should be, should be knowledgeable of. And um, I think for a long time, you know, people were making bad decisions because, they just wasn't fully educated. So it's like, you know, you think 
that you have to, you know, sell drugs or you have to, you know, risk your life to make some money. But then you realize that you can actually make more money by doing something legal. It might take a little bit longer, but if you had the information beforehand, then you might still be alive or you might not be doing a 25 year prison sentence. So I think it's like life or death financial literacy. Yeah, yeah. I agree, man. It's, it's a life or death situation, right? The information can actually free you from the, the, the situation that you could put yourself in potentially if you don't have it. And that's kind of what we started with it. And I, it's funny because you, you kind of said like, it's not hip hop, but for us, it was hip hop. It was like, we were hearing messages in the music and saying like, that's a lesson right there. So it, it, it reminded me of the first lesson that we ever did. It was, we used Jay-Z. And he, when he said all black guys sports entertainment, it was like, yeah, we really sat, sat with that. Like, yo, is that true? Like, if we look at all the people we ever looked up to and if they were wealthy, it always came from sports entertainment. And so that was a, a mission, but there's always something inside the music that we were like, all right, that can be a gateway. We know there's something that is intense enchanting about the music because the kids listen to it. And so if they listen to it, let's find something that we can actually teach from. And so when we heard Beyonce say like, pay me an equity, all right, there goes a lesson in there. Let's teach about what equity is. And when little baby says like, I ain't made a hundred million, I can't chill yet. Like, oh, there's a lesson in here. He, right? he, he's delaying his gratification for a later time. And so we always found the music as, as something that would be the candy. Right. And then we're going to put the medicine inside of it where we're going to actually teach mm -hmm. from those that position. And so it's a mixture of both. We, we understood that the younger kids needed it because that's what we were working with at the time. And then we realized it wasn't just a, an age thing. It was like an everybody thing. Right. The kids needed it. But so did their parents and so did their grandparents. And so we took it upon ourselves to say, look, we have an obligation here. We, we have an opportunity to actually educate everybody at the same time because financial literacy really doesn't have. And there's a limit to it, right? Like somebody at 12 might know more than somebody at 25, right? Absolutely. It's just if they have access to it, right? Those conversations that you have at your table, if you're sitting at the table, could change your whole life. And so it was like, all right, well, if we, we're going to take it to the kids, let's get everybody in it at the same time. And that's kind of what we've done. So, so what was that process? Like you said, you started out, I know you started out in public schools, teaching financial literacy. What was the process like saying, you know what? We're going to take this and we're going to create our own platform and we're going to make it branch out and make it more universal and national. Yeah. So it was, I was teaching in the Bronx for eight years and um, kind of just was like, man, like they don't they're not equipping these kids with the tools that they're going to need once they leave these buildings. And every day I come in like it was like a reset, like I could teach as much as I wanted to. But the environment what they were in after they left the classroom would always trump whatever I was trying to do. I was like, mm -hmm. this, this ain't gonna be the way. Like, I, I want to create a program. So I had the opportunity to create a program, a summer internship program where kids would come, they interview, and um, they tell me what they want to be in the future. And I go out in the community and try to find them an internship. And based how they performed on that internship, we would pay them. So I'm like, all right, they come into contact with money. Let's teach them about money. So twice a week, they would go to the, the internship. Twice a week, we had them in the classroom. And so I was like, if I have them in the classroom, let's give them six weeks of education that they missed for 10 months. That's how I was treating it. Like, I knew 10 months, like, they're going to learn, like you said, earth science and all these things that they may not apply, but they, they better know what credit is. They need to know what taxes are, right? They need to know how to balance a, a bank account. They need to write a check, right? They didn't even know how to write a check at this point. And so I was like, all right, we have an opportunity here. At the time, he was starting his financial advising career. So I'm like, bet, let's just combine this. Like, we're going to teach financial literacy. I'll do the education part and you'll teach the finance. Like, I'll write the lessons and you be the face of it. And so we kind of started from there. And then it kind of caught traction because he was like, look, let's record this. This is this is we got something here. And uh, mm. he, he took it to social media. And once it went to social media, it, it just it kind of went crazy. He, he actually started recording it and then doing shows and people were like, well, where's the rest of this? Like, I need to get more of this education. What can we get? And he was kind of like, all right, I'm growing my platform. You want to do a podcast? And I was just like, yeah, it's my brother. Whatever he want to do, we're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? We've had businesses before that didn't work. And so I was like, let's just support him on his, his vision. Like he wants to do a social media thing. Let's get the podcast as an extension of it. And the rest is kind of history. I, I love it because, you know, we don't, we really now, like before it used to be like hip hop groups. It used to be duos. Now everybody's like an individual, right? They're doing an individual thing. So when I'm watching two brothers who are stars and, you know, educated and brilliant in their own rank come together and say, now we're we going to combine our forces to do something that's dope. You know, I just want to, I want to celebrate that and tell us that we need to get back to that. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel not feeling that I have to compete with my brother or you, you see so many different situations break up. But just watching y'all just continue to grow. You know, I know y'all probably go through your own thing, but the way that y'all present to the world and the way that y'all mm -hmm. represent and give these messages 
and make it cool is just something that's just dope, man. So I just mm. want to salute you on that. I appreciate it. I, I told him that the, I mean, these are conversations we've had for over 25 years. I said the biggest difference mm -hmm. now is that the world gets to hear them. And so it's important, right? Like people ask like, how, how do y'all do it? How can we duplicate it? It's gonna be tough. Like talk to somebody for mm -hmm. 25 years every day. <laughs> that that's part of the formula. And so like, it was nothing for me to share my knowledge with education. But in the same way, I was learning about finance as the kids are learning. Cause I'm like, wait, these mm -hmm. things I don't know. Like I didn't know about life insurance before I became a client of his and he actually showed me these steps. And so that's the thing we always talk about, like, you know, put your ego to the side. Like, can we all win? We're going to get there faster mm. together. And so it was like, I don't care if, if somebody looks at him and like he's the star of the show. It's all right. We, we know that that name behind us is what means more to, to, to anything. Right. Because that's what that's what changes the game. That's what leaves a legacy, like the stuff that we're doing inside that name. Did y'all yeah. always have a love? Um, this is my last No, question. no, no. Please. Did y'all always have like a love of finance? Like what created this love for finances to where y'all was like, yo, this is what I want to get involved in. Yeah, me personally, Troy's story is different, but yeah. I always, I always was fascinated by by finances. I'm not really sure exactly like where. Like my dad was always an entrepreneur, so that's something that he really instilled in me early on. Was like always work for yourself, and you know that that's like that's like the era that he came from. And um, I just remember like at an early age, like just being fascinated with like movies like Wall Street and Barbarians at the Gate. It was kind of weird looking back on it now because no, none of my other friends was interested in that stuff. But that was just fascinating to me to see people like that was wearing suits and making, you know, so much money on Wall Street. And then I went to Wall Street. My dad took me to Wall Street and it was just amazing for me to see. Like that was back before the Twin Towers um, got blown up. And it was just amazing to me to see. So, the world was just moving so quickly and it was just so much stuff going on. Everybody had suits on and it was just, it was just fascinating to me. And I was just, I always knew since I was a little kid, like I want to do this. I want to trade stocks. I want to work on wall street. That's what I originally wanted to do was like work on wall street. So I always knew that I wanted to do something with finance. And I always knew like entrepreneurship was like something I knew I never wanted to have a job. Like I knew that that definitely wasn't going to suit my personality. So um, yeah, I always just had kind of had like a fascination for, for the money ever since like I was like a little kid. Yeah, for me, I, I, my parents is, is Jamaican, man. So like I'm first generation to this. Like we didn't have conversations about finance. Like the only conversations I had was amongst my friends. And so it became like a challenge for me. Like I'm a, I'm a student. I'll say that to, to the day I die, like I'm always trying to learn. And so anytime somebody's having a conversation about finance, if I don't know, I gotta go read. And I was like, look, Mm. they're not gonna have another conversation and i can't be a part of it you know what i mean like it became mm -hmm. a challenge like oh wait they're talking about stocks i need to go learn stocks right they they're talking about life insurance. i need to go learn about life insurance and so the more i started reading and more conversations i kept being part of i'm like all right now i'm grasping this and my natural thing is like as soon as i learn something i got to teach it right because that's what we that's just what we do in education if i learn something the true test to see if i've grasped it is can i teach somebody else can they understand what i just learned and so that just started and never stopped, right? So even to this day, like I'm, there's something in the news that's going on. If I don't know about it, I'm researching it. And then I'm going back to teach it to the people because they need to know it. They might have missed it or they didn't probably didn't understand it. And I think that's one of the gifts we have is kind of making these complex conversations and complex mm -hmm. topics very digestible to an audience that may not have thought that they could understand it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's like one of those things and, and the responsibility of, for, on our part to like, all right, we know what we have to do. We got to do it every day because they people are not going to rely on the typical aspect of, hey, this is how news is reported to them now. I know they look at us as a source. Like if they say it and, and they can break it down, then we can understand it and now apply it. You know, I, I was going to ask a question. I am asking a question that may not make sense to some, but it is an issue that people have where they feel like they know everything right? Like they already know everything. So they're not really growing and don't know why is because they're not investing in further development, even after they've made the money or, you know, got the million followers. And I guess, you know, that's the question I have for you all. Do you feel like you're still learning about even the things you are already experts at? Like, are you still keeping up with the new tax laws and really keeping yourself um, invested in your personal development? Yeah, for sure. I saw something on, the other day on TikTok and it was like the two biggest things that uh, millionaires do that other people don't do is that they cultivate relationships and they read a lot. And I feel like that's one of the greatest benefits of having this, this platform mm -hmm. is that it's a great networking tool. And, you know, we get to like connect with some of the brightest minds, whether it's Wall Street Trap or 19 Keys or everywhere, even up to Mark Cuban, like we've connected with him. So it's like 
the more you learn, the more you realize that you don't know. And that just goes back to, you know, being being humble enough to understand that there's always somebody that, that knows more than you. So, you know, education is something that is like, it's just so important. And you realize like, you know, so many doors unlock for you just by knowing things. And it's unfortunate because the vast majority of people, especially like, you know, in our communities, um, are just uneducated on so many different things. And it's like, you know, that's, that's for a variety of different reasons, but you know, it's like, damn, if they had some level of education, then they would have a greater understanding of things and, and the world would open up to them. And then you see other people and that's really all that they do is educate themselves because they know like the more that they learn, the more relationships that they have, it's just going to make e money a lot easier to flow into their direction. So yeah, mm. for sure. For us, we, we definitely learn as much as we possibly can. And the world is changing so quickly too. Nobody could really be an expert on anything because everything changes so quickly. So it's like NFTs wasn't even around two years ago, cryptocurrency, like, you know what I mean? So we talk about the metaverse, like there's so much stuff that's just, that's just happening in, in, in the last five years, like imagine what's going to happen in the next 10 years. So no matter how much you think, you know, already, if you stop learning, you're going to become a dinosaur. So it's definitely something that, you know, we constantly educate ourselves. And like I said, that's kind of one of the, the, the things that's really helped our platform grow is because it's a real organic vibe where we interview people and we actually ask questions to educate ourselves. So that the audience kind of mm. gets that because people tell me all the time, like, I could tell you wanted to know that question. That's why you asked it. Because I'm looking at it like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a student, like educate me. And by educating me, they're educating whoever else listens, thousands, millions of people that listen to the, to the interview. So, yeah, education yeah. is extremely important. Yeah. I, I, like, as soon but as you Troy, before that, you before you uh, Troy, before you jump in, let me just put this as extra question in. What would you tell the first, the, the beginner, especially young people, where do they go so they can get started educating themselves? Where can they, I mean, there's plenty of outlets, right? Like, like we said, like we have a platform that they can go. So YouTube university is always a great place. I mean, there's different mm -hmm. podcasts, not just us in the space, but different podcasts that they can learn from. It's really just what their interest is. And that's kind of like, we kind of pride ourselves on, like, we're going to cover so many topics that you could find something that you're going to be interested in. Like for so long, like I said, even at J-Line, when it was like sports entertainment, it was like, those are the things we're going to be. That's it. Like if we're going to be a, a rapper, we're going to be in some form of entertainment, or we're going to play sports. And so now when we bring on experts and people who are familiar in other different fields, it's like, all right, well, I never thought I could own a trucking company, but that seems interesting. Or you know what? I never thought that Airbnb could be a viable business. That seems interesting. And so we become like almost a gumbo soup of different, different opportunities. And, you know, we kind of live by that thing, right? In, in order for it to be something, you got to see it. And so we're going to put as many people that look like us in these positions to tell you like, yo, you can do this. I'm doing it. Here's the steps. I think that's one of the things that like you said, like from generation to generation, we watch people do things, but we never knew how. We just saw the end result. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, they made it to this point. Let's celebrate them. Congratulations. The part we were missing was the how to. And so I think like with this mm -hmm. information agent, what we're kind of doing is like, all right, here's what they did. Here's how they did it. Here's how you can also do it. So it's it's a it's a mm -hmm. drastic shift. So when you're talking about the next generation being so far ahead, yeah, imagine the 18 year old kid or the 14 year old kid who's listening to this episode who now has a vending machine company because he heard a podcast, right? Imagine what he does mm -hmm. from the next four years, just being an entrepreneur at 14 and seeing what it's like and experience what that's like at 18. College may be something he wants to do, or he might just say, you know what, I'm going to continue running this business that I have. Because a lot of times our kids. You know, and that was some of the things we were experiencing, like we're sitting in these kids at 14 and they're going to make the biggest financial decision of their life in the next three years. And they have no idea that it's the biggest financial decision of their life. Right. When we're talking mm -hmm. about student loans and we're talking about debt and we're talking about interest and we're talking about co-signers, all these terms are unfamiliar to the 14 year old ear. But in three years, they need to know it. And so we want to mm -hmm. keep their, their mind sharp to like, yo, if you want to go that route, here's what you need to know. If you don't want to go that route, here are like a million different options that also can be viable for you in the future. That's real. Okay, so what is cryptocurrency? <laughs> <laughs> what is like, what is it in a nutshell? What is cryptocurrency in a nutshell? Yeah, I mean, crypto, it, it comes in many different forms. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through some different ones, but I think the most popular, okay. well, I definitely know the most popular one is Bitcoin. And that's the that's the biggest cryptocurrency and the one that most people kind of, you know, recognize and, and and know about, or at least they've heard about uh, Bitcoin. So I'll talk about Bitcoin first, then I'll let Troy kind of go into some others. But 
Bitcoin is extremely uh, interesting because hey, nobody knows like who actually started it. It just kind of like appeared years ago and, and now it's become, you know, a phenomenon. Um, but I think the word currency is a little misleading because currency in order to, has to have some some traits, right? Where a currency is usually has some level of stability. Um, and a currency is something that you actually exchange for some level of, you know, value or, you know, you, you buy some things, things of that nature. It's like a bartering system where with Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies, that's not really the case. It's more so of a store of value, more comparable to like gold, but a lot more volatile, meaning, um, it's kind of hard to use something as currency when the price fluctuates so crazy. So it's like 60,000 one week and then next week is 40,000, right? So you can't really use that kind of as currency because it's like, if, if my haircut is going to be $40, I, I got to be able to pay $40. I can't pay $40. And then next day, the haircut is going to be $65 because the price of the, the, the value is going up and down. So, and then also, you know, Bitcoin started at less than a dollar and has peaked at $60,000, right? So it's, it's, it's been the best return on an, your investment out of like any asset class in the last 15 years. So being that most people are looking at it as an investment, so they're not really trading it for, or using it as currency. Like I'm not gonna give you Bitcoin for a burger if I think that this is gonna quadruple in value over the next five years. So the word currency is a little misleading. I, I think when you start to look at it more of like digital gold, um, that's something that, you know, people can kind of wrap their heads around a little bit easier because we look at gold and gold really has, and people say like, well, crypto has no value, but nothing really has value other than what we believe it has value, right? Like mm. even gold, um, gold, yeah, it has some uses where you can actually use gold, but for the most part, most people are kind of just hoarding gold and it's just always been something that has been valuable since, you know, thousands of years ago and it has gone up in value. So we place value in gold, we wear gold. So people think that gold is valuable, but the minute that people really think that gold has no value, then gold's not gonna be valuable anymore, but it's just been valuable mm -hmm. for so long that it's been like a staple a store of value. So you put, you know, you can have gold and, and store it and then it goes up over the course of time where Bitcoin is kind of like the same thing. So that's why a lot of people compare Bitcoin to like digital gold. Um, mm -hmm. but, but do you sell it, but selling it, Right. Am I am I am I right? That's being able to sell it is the value for most of it. Well, it's, it has a lot of different values. So you have the blockchain technology. So one of the things is that it, it takes the power. The, the original idea of cryptocurrency is taking the power out of the banking system. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, going through the bank, everything is tracked and they they know the serial numbers and, you know, it's your money is being controlled by central institutions, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, the federal government, banking branches, it's, it's being controlled and it's it's under a roof where this idea is to kind of have a house with no roof, where there's, there's really no control, there's no regulation. And um, it's just a peer to peer transaction. So if I'm sending my son money through Bitcoin, it's just me and him. We, mm -hmm. we don't have to use Chase Bank. We don't have to use Cash App. We don't have to use Zelle. We don't have to use Venmo. We can just use peer-to-peer -peer transaction, I send you the money, it goes through the blockchain, and now we we eliminate, we cut out the middleman. What, okay, so like you said, gold backs USD. No, nah, it doesn't, so it doesn't, what, but gold, 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 used to. gold used to back. It US, used to, but okay. they, um, right. ever, I, I think, I forgot who was the president. Nixon. Um, that took us off of that. So for the last 50, 60 years, the dollar is not actually backed by anything. It's only backed by the faith Belief. in the dollar, the, and then, you know, the military, obviously, things of that nature. So, yeah, the, nothing is really backed by anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. The, yeah. So I'm that's why what, cryptocurrency makes sense, because it's whatever belief that we put into <laughs> any level of currency is the value that it has at this point. Exactly. Yeah. I did a lesson once with, with some fifth graders and I asked them how much is a dollar worth? And they were like, it's a dollar. Well, I'm like, well, if something can be duplicated at a rapid pace at a numerous amounts, how much is it really worth? And they started thinking like, oh, and so that was like kind of the leeway into teaching cryptocurrency. It was like, it's just a belief system, right? Like if I believe it's worth this much, that's how much it's worth. So when we see it fluctuate from 40,000 40, to 50,000, 60,000, that's how much it's worth. And so when, and, and to me, you asked a question about uh, buying it and selling it. And we always in, encourage people, we treat it like an investment. And so an investment is something you're going to put money in and you're going to let it grow over time. 
The problem is people mm-hmm. will try to trade it, right? And they'll buy it when they're like, hey, it's 45,000, it can go to 60, and then it drops down to 28, and now you're left holding a bag, right? But if you, mm. that happened in 2017, where we saw it run up to 20,000, and by 2020, it was at 3,000. But those same people who mm-hmm. sold it, right? They were like, hey, I'm gonna cash this on the way up. Great, it went down to 3,000, they sold it, right? They cut that, I'm gonna cut my losses here. Those same people, when it went up to 66,000, were probably like, yeah, you know, what, what what just happened? I, I could have made money. So that's why we try to treat it as an investment long term, because long term, it'll it'll appreciate. And then that's when you gain real value. So I, I, now I'm starting to get it like was it's just like with stocks, right? You have to see value in something, right? You got to say, I see this and I believe that the rest of the world is going to see it the way I see it in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to invest my money in it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you also got to know when people are going to stop seeing the value in that. So that you don't get caught holding the bag with a bunch of something that ain't worth nothing. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. So that means if the new Airbnb model, like I have stock in Airbnb. So mm-hmm. if the new model pops up, that's got the houses with the purple light and the, the beds, you know, move type of thing. And everybody's starting to shift to that. Y'all are saying still hold the traditional Airbnb or is it at that point that you want to shift? It's like it's it's like music, right? At, at one point, Rakim was the was the best rapper in the world, and he was the hottest rapper. But then, oh, my son, no, no, I'm I'm not gonna let him say that because you know it's a Bronx thing. So we always gonna say KRS was Chris. <laughs> so, come on, man, come on, Chris. We gonna, gonna, gonna keep it all the way Bronx. Yeah, we gonna KRS keep it all the way BX in here. Come man. on, man. Nah, oh, nah. Man. Shout out to KRS. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So at some point, but at some point in time, you know, um. Nas came out, Biggie came out, Jay Z came out, they became the hottest, right? And then 50 Cent came out, and then Dipset came out, and now Little Baby's out, and Drake's out. So y- y- your value goes up and down, right? So it's like the same thing with NBA players, right? So the, the key with stocks, going to the stock conversation, is that this is why it's extremely important for people to diversify. And we like to talk about ETFs or index funds. Mm-hmm. This is like a basket of different stocks because you bring up a good point where it's like, it's hard. The individual, whether it's individual coins or cryptocurrency or individual stocks, the difficult thing is that you got to know, you got to know when to get in and when to get out because nothing lasts forever. So it's like a good company ten years ago might not be a, a good company now, and now their stock is down because mm-hmm. they didn't make the right adjustments or just a new company came out that's better. So that's why the safer bet is to like invest in like an ETF which has like 20 different companies inside of it. And then they'll move companies in and out. So you're not investing in just one particular company. You're investing in a basket of companies. But mm-hmm. like right now, Apple is the number one company in the world, like right? Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. These are these are companies that are leading, you know, the world. 15 years from now, it might be a whole set of, of new companies. Mm-hmm. So now those old companies might not be the company that you need to invest in anymore. Yeah. So you have to be mm-hmm. ex- extremely like, you know, up to date on, on the times and, and like, you know, stay yeah. up to date on what you're actually invested in, but also you Technology. have to diversify. Yeah. yeah that, I, and I, you got, I, but then they also, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. no, I would say a prime example of that. And we all over the same age. So like, if I told you 35 years ago, you should invest in Blockbuster. You probably think it was a good idea, right? Because VHS mm-hmm. was the thing and people have VCRs and this is a great thing. 10 years after they come after after that, you hear about this company, Redfin, and you hear about this company, Netflix, that's inside your supermarket and you can just rent right from a machine. And then Blockbuster has a chance to buy that company and doesn't. And then streaming comes mm. and you're like, wait, I don't have to go to a store anymore. I could do this right from the comfort of my home. And now there is no Blockbuster, right? There's like one store left that they keep as like an antique store. And now Netflix mm-hmm. is the number one streaming service in the world. And that's how we consume content. And so if you pay attention and educate yourself, you're like, all right, if streaming is the next thing, we need to look at that. It's like even like LimeWire. Like, that's crazy. Like I just saw the other day, LimeWire, which was used to be the place where you could download music illegally, allegedly. Some people did that. <laughs> um, but now, you know, they disappear when when Apple Music came, right? Now we didn't need that. We don't, we don't have to do this illegal. We got Spotify. We paid 99 cents. And now we got... Uh, entire music catalog in our phones. And so now LimeWire is coming back. It's like, like yo, all right, well, we're going to do NFTs now. Like, oh, wow, they're trying to reinvent themselves. So paying attention to what's happening and not just overlooking mm. it. That's why I said, like, we're going to read as much as we can and learn as much as we can, because the chances are that you might miss it. And if you miss it, you know, you're going to have us to rely on. So, and even if you did, yeah. I, I just learned so the more much you educate in the yourself, last 10 minutes. Yeah, go ahead. 
No, no, I just learned so much in 10 minutes. Just oh. so much just now. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and okay, well, let me, you know, I'm over here really trying to think of things like people like me, what they don't understand. Okay, because I hear you saying, let me put it in this context. It's like you got the girl you've been with for 10 years, and then the new girl comes who's tighter body, she looks a little hotter. <laughs> You know, she got it going on a little different. And now the 10 year girl is, you know, sort of thrown out. But the question is, at what point do you look at a brand like a Sony? If we thinking of this girl, the 10 year girl being a Sony, that this is a brand that lasts forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you make those decisions as well? I get the blockbuster perspective, but there's also the perspective of, you know, brands that are like everlasting. But there's, and I think which, and I'm, I'm going to take a game. I'm going to take a guess at this. I think what it is, is the 10 year girl's ability to evolve and say, okay, mm-hmm. this is what the new girls okay. is doing. So I'm going to go get me some Chanel shoes. I'm going to get my body <laughs> done. I'm going to learn certain things. Don't you say I'm gonna that, my son. I'm going to learn how to cook. I'm just being honest. It's just, it's I'm learning a, the I'm evolution. Gonna learn how to cook. I'm going to I ain't cooking. I'm going to learn the new meals they cook. I'm going to do all this stuff. Right, I'm going to learn how to be healthy exactly. with my meals. And, and I'm going to just combine. It's just like when you look at okay. Polo, right? Polo is a brand that has outlasted a lot of things. They kept their they signature, but they're able to evolve their clothing to fit what today's culture is. So they're never out of the culture and they have a, a signature brand that everybody can identify. So they're able to evolve and stay classic at the same time. Mm, okay. yeah. that you gotta watch that. I'll, Go ahead, y'all. I'll, give, I'll give you two examples. Um, Apple, right? Apple is a company that is still relevant, still the number one company in the world and is only getting better, right? They, they haven't really missed in 10 years. A company that, that might be in trouble is Facebook. And now we're actually mm. watching this where, you know, Facebook had a hell of a run for 15 years. But now, you know, for the first time in 15 years, they they have negative growth on their platform. Um, you know, people are not really on Facebook that much. Instagram is still there, but TikTok is a major, you know, thorn in the side of Instagram. So now we got it. We, we actually just watching the situation to see how they how they can maneuver out of this. But this might be potentially watching a company kind of going downhill. Right. So it's, it's extremely important to just be observant and to watch, pay attention, read, especially if you want to invest in like individual stocks, read like their quarterly reports, their quarterly earnings, how they're doing, how their growth is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the good thing with a publicly traded company. All the information is public. So like Facebook is, is a company that like, we're watching in real time who might potentially be like how you talk about Blockbuster, like yeah. that we might be watching a, the death of a company. Yeah, I'll give you another. Well, let me up. just insert myself in that. OK, right, and, right, and let me be clear that the brothers that earn your leisure did not say this. Tamika Mallory is saying it, that one of the things that Facebook will have to do is stop being so damn racist because they allow white supremacists to run wild on Facebook. And as soon as a black person chooses to speak up on anything, depending on how they feel about it and whatever protocols they put in place, black people are shut down and their voices are silenced. So that might be one aspect because you know us when we committed to something we be with it until it's dead all the way like we with it (laughs) all the way to the end we going with the ship (laughs) yeah Yeah. i mean but that's that's true right censorship was an issue right they they couldn't really figure out how to censor and who to censor and so when you try to do that look what happens right the the former president of the united states decides he's going to create his own media company now what mm-hmm. now like mm-hmm. now you can't stop them right and so like you you, you got to be careful with that but i'm gonna give you another example of that uh evolution and being able to adapt because amazon in 1999 was a book store right it you only mm-hmm. bought books from amazon mm-hmm. right but they realized that people wanted more than just books that could be delivered straight to their homes and so now they started they started adding other things you could buy clothes then you could buy electronics in 2022 they're the number one e-commerce business in the world Right. They were able to evolve with the times. Evolve. Right. And so like they started as just having books and you can but look at what they had now. Right. So that was that that adaptation and being able to evolve with the times. So listen, President Biden just signed an executive order for a review of the government approach to cryptocurrency. So what does that mean for the future of crypto? Yeah, we have to see they should they said they should be actually having a speech about this sometime this week to to see like you know what what his official stance is going to be but you know what we think is that it'll it'll be some level of a government um crypto that will be put in place 
Um, and then there'll be more regulation in the crypto market. They already started to regulate crypto, but it'll be more regulation, uh, more oversight. Cause that's one of the, that's been one of the, the criticisms of cryptocurrency is that there's not enough regulation. It's like the wild, wild west. And, mm. you know, people aren't paying taxes and it's funding terrorism and all kinds of stuff like that. So, you know, it'll probably have a lot more, um, regulations that that'll be put in place. And also, you they're gonna mess it up. They're gonna, they, mess, they're gonna yeah. mess it up. <laughs> that's what you right? like, <laughs> It's like what they did to Rucker, man. As soon as they came <laughs> and they start regulating, as soon as they people put couldn't sit up. on the gate. Yeah, man. <laughs> Marijuana too. Yeah, Just man. Every everything. time, man. The hood can't have <laughs> yeah, nothing. You, I mean, but that's great because like y'all can hear it, right? Like when you tell you the premise of it was to be decentralized, and when you hear a government saying that they're gonna make a coin, it's like, wait, that kind of defeats the purpose yeah, of that the they initially had. So. You know, it so is do, do y'all think the last question I want to ask? Do y'all think that cryptocurrency will ever replace the current monetary system? Um, hmm. uh, I don't think fully because I think that governments control currency. Uh, mm. and you know, it's just, it's so many different levels to this. Like, even if you've been watching news with this Russia, Ukraine situation, they just kicked Russia out of the swift banking system, which is like a mm. European banking system. And that most people never even heard of before you got the, the world monetary fund. And there's so many different like levels, how they ha really have this, this financial game in a, in a, in a chokehold that, you know, it's really kind of difficult for the powers to be to just give up power. That's almost impossible, especially, you know, in the near future. So I don't know if it'll completely take over, but it'll definitely be uh, something that's here to stay mm -hmm. and a part of the economic system. Um, but I think that, you know, since the beginning of time, governments have always had a strong hold on currency and that probably will continue. But this can be an alternative um, to that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's a new uh, we should look at it as a new asset class and treat it like that. And so having a lot of education around it, you know, trusting, you know, finding sources, reading white papers, which is, it tells you what exactly these currencies do and their functionalities, educating yourself in that form so that when, if you're gonna make an investment, you've taken in as much as knowledge as possible before you do it. Um, but yeah, it, I, it's definitely here to stay uh, because we can see it even, even in the centralized way where banks are now using blockchain technology and they could say like, hey, we hate Bitcoin and we hate Bitcoin. But if you look and read the things that they're doing, most of them are invested in some form of cryptocurrency, whether they're using blockchain technology or they're saying, look, hey, we're gonna be involved in the metaverse in the future. And so it's, it's here to stay um, and make sure that you educate yourself is what I would implore people to do. So if you had $100,000, if somebody comes to you, they say, I got $100,000 right now, what, what do I do with it? What would be like the quick reply? Um, everybody's situation is different, but the first thing I would tell them to do is try to pay off debt. If they have credit card debt, especially mm -hmm. before you look to invest, try to get out of debt. That's, that's something that really hurts a lot of people is that, you know, you, you got these high credit card debt, so pay off your debt. And then you always got to have money in savings. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just like an emergency fund, three to six months of whatever your monthly expenses are. Take care of that first. Then, you know, make sure you have like life insurance. You know, I'm, I'm leading up to this because most people will start at the top down where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, put, put it in crypto, put it in stocks. And it's like, that's not really the most responsible thing to do. Like you got to kind of build a, a house from the foundation up. So build, build your foundation first, like solid financial planning stuff. Then go to the next phase. The next phase to me probably would be stocks, invest in stocks, um, you know, more on the safer side, like ETF index fund. And then after that, you know, allocate a portion to like, you know, maybe cryptocurrency, but understand that cryptocurrency is still extremely volatile and it's still relatively in its, in its new phase. So you don't want to allocate too much money, never invest anything, but especially cryptocurrency that you can't afford to lose. That's like the golden rule in life because too many people treat investing like gambling and investing is not gambling, but it, be, it can become synonymous with gambling if you apply gambling principles to investing. And when you, when you treat it like Vegas, you're going to end up losing just like you lose in Vegas. So yeah. Vegas, oh, they set the rules, man. They set the rules. <laughs> that, but the house you, always wins. The house always so wins. You're, so you don't think, cause like me going on the internet and putting my money in stuff, I've done it because I see that this is a thing and some of the investments that I've made, I'm watching them grow, right? So, okay, that's cool. I want to have something in my hand that I own, this piece of paper, this pen, 
for my money. And so if I had $100,000, I don't know if I would immediately go to the stock idea. I would be thinking more like when you talked about Airbnb or something like that. So would you say for a person like me that doesn't like to take risk, that yeah, it's real, better to go in a different direction? Real estate is always going to be an asset. Real estate is always going to be probably, you know, one of the top assets in the world. So you can never go wrong with real estate as long as you buy buy correctly. So yeah, definitely. That's that's another alternative. Real estate. I think, you know, real estate and stocks is like the, the two cornerstones of investing. Um, you know, definitely real estate. If you're interested in, in that, then that's not something that, you know, I would I would discourage. I just understand that, you know, when you invest in real estate, there's a lot of other stuff that come along with it. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, you invest in stocks, you buy a stock, you're not happy with it, you can sell it tomorrow. Real estate doesn't really work like that. You can't just buy a home. At first, it takes a long time to buy the home. And then, you know, when you buy a home, if you're going to rent out the property, you got to make sure that you can get the tenants. And then, especially in New York, it's a, it's a headache if you ever have to kick a tenant out. Mm -hmm. um, you got to, you know, have somebody that can change the boiler, that can cut the grass. Like, you know, not to discourage mm -hmm. people, but just to understand, like, there's a lot that goes into Taxes. physical... <laughs> yeah, the physical ideas of owning something is is a lot more involved than owning something like digitally where you can just buy it, get in, get out, do whatever you want. It's a lot, a lot less, a lot cleaner. Yeah. And I, if you had the hundred thousand, I would I would take some of that all allocated towards your education. Right. Mm. Because if you're just putting it in Airbnb and you have no idea how to run an Airbnb business, that's gonna be tough. You're gonna lose your money. If you put it in stocks, you don't know how to trade. You don't know how to invest, you're gonna lose your money. And so make sure that first and foremost, you educate yourself in any aspect of any area you wanna be in, right? Get education or and find a mentor, right? That always helps, right? Find somebody who's been through the experiences, who's had some, some you know, trials and tribulations, maybe some failures and some highs. I always call them glows and goals. Like we used to say that in the classroom, like what was the best thing you learned from that? What's something that you, that you probably shouldn't have done, right? Cause now if I made a mistake, you don't have to do it, which could cost you money. So always educate yourself. Well, listen, man, you guys are dope. You are amazing. And I just want to once again, give y'all your flowers. And because I already know in the next 10 years, y'all going to be historical. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about y'all. Y'all going to get every award in the world. That's right. But before we leave, I need one question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Grits, where do you take your grits with sugar or salt? <laughs> I'm Jamaican, man. We don't eat grits. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I don't do sugar or salt in grits. I don't really eat grits too much. But when I did, I'm trying to cut cheese. But when I did, I, I was eating with cheese and hot sauce. I did hot sauce. Oh, OK, so you yeah. was on the butter was on the, yeah, you was on side, the, not the sweet the, side, the right? Yeah, okay. yeah okay. I'm a hot See? sauce. I'm, I'm yeah, a hot I know. Sauce. Well, OK. All right. Well, no, listen, so man. So they with me, I guess. basically. Come on, come I, guess. On. I mean, well, look, they one. didn't say salt. Only, only so that's all it is. is with me. He, didn't so even, he don't even eat it at all. He don't eat it at all. But we we. We on that 233 White Plains Road, Boston Road flow, man. We got to have some African <laughs> sauce, oh, bro. Come man. on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot, man. Well, that's still you up there with the yard man. Not sure. The yard man up there. <laughs> Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all Continue so to do much. what y'all do, pushing the culture forward. We appreciate y'all, man. Nothing how do people success. sign up yeah, for classes Yeah, how people sign up to your class? Tell them where to follow it, find y'all. Yeah, yeah. Now, first and foremost, thank you for having us. I appreciate it. And keep up the advocacy. Keep up the good work on your end, for sure. Uh, you're definitely an inspiration and motivation to us. And if anybody wants to check us out, it's Earn Your Leisure across all social media platforms, uh, on all podcast outlets, on YouTube, and then EYLUniversity.com. That's our online educational portal if you want a more hands-on learning experience. So thank you guys again, man. I appreciate it. All right. We appreciate Thanks y'all, man. Keep Much it up. love. Be love. safe appreciate out it. there, man. All right. Love love. You too. Thanks. Take care. Shout out to my BX brethren from Earn Your Leisure, Rashad Bilal, Troy Millens. These brothers are phenomenal. Interview they know us. stuff. They know the stuff. <laughs> and not only stuff. do they know the stuff, they know how to break the stuff down. Because I learned, yo, listen to me. In about 15, 20 minutes, I got everything. Oh, like I start, Lord. No, I'm telling you. Yo, look, Lord. now, yo, listen to me. Y'all think it's a joke. The way I'm about to get on my <laughs> whole crypto slash stock market. Oh, man. Listen, oh, you ain't God. even gonna understand. And next, we just gotta get some of my other brothers. We gotta get 19 keys. We gotta get Wall Street track. Like these brothers, the way they break down this is so phenomenal. It's these dope. brothers, like they they pushing the culture forward, and they're really going to be responsible for what we call intergenerational wealth, man. Because yeah, I think yeah. people gonna get it. You know, people so gonna get it. I mean, gonna get it. I get some things, but you know me, I'm all like, eh. so now I have to call them and say. 
and explain this again and then that. And it's like, I'm one of those people that you have to explain things to twice. I have to read books sometimes twice. I might have a little form of dys dyslexia or something, but I need another round. I heard, I heard, shout out to 19 Keys. He was doing the, the Breakfast Club interview and he said something that was dope. He said, that's why they call it research. He said, you got to search once and then research it yeah, again. Yeah, I need it. So we got to do research. You want the people that got to do it. Me too, because yeah. I get it. But then I got to sharpen it up because once I get it, I got it. Right, right, You know what I'm saying? Right. So shout no, out to these brothers, to, man. Mm -hmm. Like I've been wanting to do all of these things for a long time and I'm getting more acclimated. Into, but the way they just broke it down to me was like, you know how a light bulb just go off? A light bulb just went Well, off. the $100,000 answer is really important because while I do want to have something in my hand, so I want to buy a pen. I don't want you to tell me that I put money into pens on the internet. I want the pens shipped to my house. That's me. But then I got to find a place to put the pens and I got to take care of them and I got to change the, the ink cartridge when it's not working. And I don't have a lot of time. So I have to reshape sort of my thinking that it's better to have something that you actually own that's a product in your hand, knowing that you therefore have to take care of that and you have to have time to invest time in mm -hmm. it versus, like he said, digitally, once you put your money in, if you don't really like it, you can shift and move quickly. You can't really do that. When you own something. Yeah, right. So the, hey, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that so, gave me know, a perspective. Listen. You live and you learn, and I learned a lot today. I'm going to take the class. You down? To of take course, class? man. Those are my brothers. I, I want to support. If you don't know, go to Earn Your Leisure on all platforms. Their podcast is one of the number one podcasts. They have a course, EYL University, that you can go on and get piece by piece, and they, br they break it down to you, and they bring you up to speed. So shout out to them brothers, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Love it. And with that said, we come to another episode, <laughs> the end of another episode of Street Politicians. We appreciate y'all for always supporting us. We're moving up to number one. we moving up to number one, the best podcast on the internet. You know what I'm talking about? Moving on up. We're moving on up, man. Shout out to everybody who supports us. We're going to keep doing what we do, so you keep supporting us. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Just tell us something, man. <laughs> <laughs> At Street Politicians Pod. At Street Politicians Pod. And listen, don't think we forgot about our small business segment. We have not. We're still collecting small businesses. So if you have a business that you want us to a promote, business. a real business, a tax ID number, ways that people can do e-commerce with you or a store or a restaurant or some service that you provide, you should hit us up. At Street Politicians Pod, at Street Politicians Pod, that's where you all hit us up with your ideas. And my son says, if gram, you like us, if you like us, or love you us, don't. you hate us. I don't really us think you should. If you don't like us, just don't talk. Nah, to us. tell me because okay. I want to know what you don't but, like. You know, they should go to my son and Y General on Instagram Listen, and tell you about how much they don't I like have you. No problem. At Street Politicians Pod, we want any, you know, even critique, but with respect about how yeah. the show can be better. But moreover, don't think that we forgot about the small business segment. Uh, we want to make sure that we highlight as many real businesses. Real business. What they need to have. They got to have a tax ID. <laughs> they got to have a place where they can e-commerce. You can go to the place, the facility. <laughs> or you, you can know, go to the or facility. You can, right. you just, people can spend their money <laughs> right. and they get a receipt. And they get a receipt. A receipt. Not just like... Put slip the money yeah. over here. We're nah. not talking about those kind of businesses. No. Like real functioning services and businesses. You can go to at Street Politicians Pod. Hit us up in the DMs. Within the next couple of weeks, we'll be back to our small business segments um, and making sure that we highlight all those great small businesses. And brothers, we have to say every time, send us your businesses. We know. We know you've got barbershops. We know you've got products. We know you have services. you got car services you guys are doing all types of things make sure we have that information so we can highlight it on street politicians that's a fact so with that said i'm not gonna always be right miss mallory is not gonna always be wrong but we both always and i mean always be authentic salute <laughs> Listen to Street Politicians on the Black Effect Network on iHeartRadio. And catch us every single Wednesday for the video version of Street Politicians on iWomen.tv.